da, 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 da. Can you hear me now? Yes. Bum, 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 bum. What's up, party people of the AACL, the All-American Collegiate League? What's going on? What's happening? What is cracking? I'll tell you what's cracking. This fucking long-ass season is almost fucking over. And now it's crunch time, folks. The last couple weeks have been a little intense, and I feel like it's only going to get a little more intense every week. We've got week 14 coming up, and then week 15 next week is rivalry week. Then we go into playoffs and bowl games. We are down to the nitty motherfucking gritty. Welcome to Season 3 AACL, Episode 15 of The Tonight Show, or AACL Tonight. Look at The Tonight Show. I think I'm all like on NBC and shit. Uh, the AACL tonight. Uh, I see a bunch of you jumping in the chat. I'm going to introduce my crew here first, and then I'm going to get to you guys. Uh, the normal peeps are with me. we got one running a little late, as usual. No big deal. Uh, but uh, we've got Ray Bashan here, as always. Ray, I know you were feeling sick this week. How are you feeling, buddy? Oh, I'm feeling good. Just had... <laughs> You know what? I'm feeling worse now. I'm going to leave. Right off the hey, fucking... fuck you. I love you. <laughs> that was kind of fucking great. Anyway, how are you feeling? Uh, it's just a it's just a normal thing for her now, apparently. Uh, feeling good. Uh, sore throat's gone. Just a little nasally and congested with a cough. All right. Well, that's good. Uh, Yogi, what about you, bro? You you good to go? How you feeling, man? Here's Diva Day. <laughs> Dude, I'm like, I'm like, welcome to the Tonight Show. ba da ba ba da ba Waiting oh. for your monologue. I know, right? I'm going to get that sound and put it in the soundboard. We can do it after Dave's dun dun dun. That might not be a bad idea, actually. Nah, I knew he'd like that. Uh, Yogi, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. I'm down here in the Outer Banks for most of the week. All right. I'm going to go do some fishing tomorrow. Nice. It's like oh, yeah, the, uh, the the hurricane that uh, Milton that's on the way is not going to affect that. I hope. Nah, it, it, it'll be day. Hurricane name is Milton. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's a weird one. It is. It's not going to affect us until later. Okay. So I'll get some fishing in tomorrow. All right. Uh, Special K is running late. He blamed it on the train. Uh, I don't have a Millie Vanilli soundboard right now to blame it on the train, but that's what he said in his DM. So. We'll have to, we'll grill him when he gets here, but we'll take his word for it in the meantime. Uh, DJ Clamsy Whamsy on the Wheels of Steels on the ones and twos in the house tonight. Clams, what's up, girl? How you feeling? We vibing. We vibing. We vibing. We vibing. All right. Let's check out the uh, let's check out the party people. The first one in. The very, very, very first one in. Crazy Canuck. Good to see you. Follow closely. Or shortly, I might say, I guess. By my BFF, Stream Elements. David Leathers, the man with the best first name in the history of all creation. Yogi Bar, Boomberry, Dave Axis in the house. I don't see that guy very often. Uh, let me see who else. Justin Reside, Ray Bashan, Frank Doom. Uh, those are the only ones chatting so far. Let's see who's hiding in the background. Is Twin Screw there? Probably, as always. Boomberry. Did I say Boomberry already? Freddie Trammell. Oh, Keith. Keith is watching on the or listening on the train. Look at Live 24. Not sure who you are, but welcome to the program. That's about all we got so far on this Tuesday night. Seems a little earlier than normal, even though it isn't. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because Lisa's gone. Maybe it's because I'm into my third glass of wine. I don't know. We can uh, we can talk about that later. Maybe uh, it's Maybelline. It's what? Maybe it's Maybelline. Oh, I thought you first you said make believe. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, I'm pretty fucking sure I'm here, bro. Oh, look at Gunny. Oh, Gunny's in the chat, too. He's like, go Vandy. Fucking A. That was amazing. Ooh. The best part of that day was that, and then it went to the worst part of the day where fucking Tennessee lost to uh, Arkansas on the last play. What the fuck? That sucked. But anyway, what's up, Cotatoes? All right. Uh, here's what we normally do, folks. We normally do story time. I don't have any fucking stories. I check with the boys. They don't really have any stories. It was kind of a boring week slash weekend for all of us. So I do want to share two uh, semi-funny things real quick, though, before we jump into the show. The first is if you saw uh, the Campus Pub earlier today, my boy Eagle fucking nailed it. And I'm probably going to order this if it turns out to be a real thing. And if it's not, I will probably make it into a real thing this year for my Halloween costume. But literally, that is fucking me right there. 
old hater DJ costume. Vital good, digital bad. All these years, I used to DJ back in the day a lot. Um, I'd do everything from fucking weddings and house parties to fucking nightclubs and the whole nine yards. And uh, I got to tell you, I still have my vinyl with me. Two crates of fucking vinyl. I still carry me everywhere we fucking move to, everywhere we go. And uh, I love that it says includes weekly Facebook rants about the about back in the day. That's definitely me. It says hatred of all new music. I don't know if it's all new music, but a lot of it. It says tired gatekeeper takes talks about the vinyls versus DJ, uh, or what did it say about vinyl versus digital sync controllers, etc. Listen, DJs today, yeah. and I don't mean to offend you if you're a real DJ, but I'm gonna fucking offend you anyway. You're not a real DJ. I'm just saying, if you don't if you don't roll fucking vinyl, if you don't spin the fucking the black vinyl, you ain't shit. So fuck off. There you go. Anyway, I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, Eagle. It also, it also has like a little. A little asterisk down there says may or may not include years of alcoholism. Oh fuck! You know, ironically, back when I was DJing, I was so young, I was barely even drinking back then. I was uh, I started DJing when I was about sixteen, and I DJed right up until the time I was about twenty three, twenty four, I think, somewhere around there. And then I I gave it up to be responsible and get married and go to work and have family and blah 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 blah. So there you go, folks. That's my Halloween costume. If I can find it, what does the hat say? Really? It says really real realist DJing. Boom. That might be the new name of my company. I don't know. I don't yet. think that's an actual costume. That looks like I, somebody just put letters on top of it. But you could recreate it. Oh, I could totally recreate it. I've, I'll do the headphones and everything. I'll take it. Fuck it. I'll take the headphones I'm wearing right now. The bar up the street from us has Halloween parties every year, so I might do that. All right. Here's the other thing that I wanted to fucking say. So we were talking about. Whoop. I almost gave that away. So we're talking about the hurricane. And listen, I know how bad it is. Um,. This one's supposed to be even worse than the last one. And it's not necessarily anything to make light of, so don't take it that way. But in tragedy, sometimes we need to find some humor. And for those of you, we were just talking about this before we went on the air. What's the name of this hurricane again, you guys? Milton. Milton. Does anybody remember the name of the quarterback at Tennessee last season? He's now the third stringer for the New England Patriots. Anybody? This, hey, you got hey, you got crickets for me, oh, clams. Shit. This is the cricket. I was about to say, where's the crickets? And did I hear these nuts? So you guys don't remember? His name is Joe Milton. He backed up uh, Hendon Hooker, and then he was the the quarterback last year. He's the guy who can throw it like eighty five yards, but can't hit the fucking broadside of a barn. Does anybody remember that? Joe, oh, there's some people in the chat. Joe Milton, he's got the strongest arm in the NFL. He can throw it like 80, 85 yards. It's unbelievable. But he can't fucking hit a receiver to save his life. He actually started the last preseason game this season and has been demoted to third fucking string on New England. That's how fucking terrible he is to hit a receiver. So anyway, all of that to build up this meme that I saw today that I had to share for you guys today. <laughs> Tell me that's not fucking hilarious. Oh, worry, champ, but you're in good hands. <laughs> oh, my God. Joe Milton. <laughs> Predicted route, and there's the actual route. That was the whole fucking season with Tennessee last season. It was unfucking real. Uh, he couldn't hit a receiver that, to save his like life. That the Patriots QB situation right now, actually. Yeah, well, I mean, dude, he played a great couple preseason games, and then he just fucking went back to sucking. But uh, Albert says, no, Drake May is starting. No, 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 but there's somebody. No, the guy who got hurt was the first, was the starter. May was the backup and Milton third. So Kobe. if the injury is back, Bess Bessit or something like that, or Resit or whatever the fuck it is, I don't J know. Jacoby Bursett. Whatever. That that dude. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Milton was third, but I think, dude, I saw this meme literally in the middle of the night. It's like two, three in the morning last night. Lisa's fucking sleeping. I just started bursting out laughing. She's like, What are you doing? Why are you waking me that up? Is, that is hilarious. It's fucking great, right? What's up, Special K? How you been, bro? Bro, how was that? Hey, how was that train asking for a friend? For, I've, I've been working for fucking a year and a half at this company, and I there's a train track on my way home that saves me like five minutes. I can count on one hand the number of times that a train has passed by, and this one. Oh, I bet you can count on. Oh, I bet you can gosh, now. <laughs> Fuck the national railway system. That thing was going about two miles an hour, maybe. I don't know what trains you're riding in the Midwest, but the ones I used to ride in California hauled ass, bro. I'm going to tell you. Well, Keith, welcome back to the show, buddy. And 
What do you uh, think? It's good to be here. Is this a fucking funny meme or what? Yes, that is hilarious. It's fucking great. All right, I almost fucked this up. I got these in the wrong order. For, for anybody that didn't hear him before, this is obviously a joke. If you live in Florida or you're around Milton in his current path, just stay safe, please. It is a joke. And like I said, yeah. in, in the in the face of tragedy, uh, sometimes a little humor helps. And this was actually really fucking funny. So, and all right, Tampa Bay is about to get fucked up. They are about to. Yeah, Tampa, I, I, I Tampa. Think, is, I think the one good, the one piece of good news related to Hurricane Milton that I saw is that last night, um, it was downgraded from a Cat Five to a Cat Four, and it got, supposedly it got near the coast. Yeah, supposedly it's going to stay that way just because of how close it got to Mexico. Yeah, I mean, and and, the, and some of that along that coast, that, that western coast, still cleaning up from the last fucking hurricane, which Frank right. just said as I'm saying it, actually. Yeah, I mean, I we have some family friends that live in Tampa that I haven't talked to in a while, but my mom sometimes catches <clears throat> up with, and they're, they supposedly were fine from the last hurricane well michaela in the chat says it has now been upgraded back to a cat I'm, five i'm che i'm checking this hold on yeah i'm checking that as well let's Mr. check Jax. michaela michaela you have to uh reference your sources please you know how to do this it is school. back up to a cat five. Oh, it is and yeah mo mo most importantly is the speed that it goes across florida they want it to move along and not linger right yeah because it's just been staying there yeah, yeah. Thing, as soon as it hits Tampa, it's going to be a Cat Three. It's going to be a Cat Three near shore because once it hits where you see that little zone underneath the Milton predicted route there, as soon as it hits that water, it's going to start weakening, and then once it gets to land, it's going to be a three. Yeah, I mean St. Petersburg is basically going to be an island, I imagine. Well, I don't know if we grandkids live there. Oh, hopefully, hopefully they're In getting South out. Tampa. They're getting safe. Oh, yeah. They're hunkered down. I don't know if we have oh, any wait. people from the AACL that live uh, along the coast of florida here at all but if you are hopefully you evacuated if not hopefully you're able to hunker down and stay safe and endure through this so uh as always just like the last hurricane you know thoughts prayers well wishes all that good stuff to anybody who's got to endure it my uh my daughter-in-law's parents are still putting their life back together up in north carolina they're le they've been leading the charge i've been watching her every day on social media because we can't get up there to help yet the 40 is fucked and and whatever that other highway was and uh, they're they're literally got videos of military aircraft coming in helicopters coming in dropping off supplies people cutting trees off of houses like it's still fucked up there and it's going to be fucked for a while so uh private clamp says i know this is going to sound terrible but thank god i live in the yeah i mean listen there's a reason why i don't live uh you know greenville south carolina and lake jackson texas which is only about 30 minutes north of Galveston. There's a reason why those two places finished second and third on our list. And it's mostly due to hurricanes. The, right. the houses we looked at in Galveston were the uh, insurance cost more than the fucking mortgage. Imagine that shit. That's I believe crazy. it. That's crazy. I, I, oh, I, will say, that's, I will say that's where I am. I, w I will say this being in Jacksonville, Jacksonville hasn't really been hit dead on by a hurricane since hurricane Dorothy back in like the 1990s. Or like 1970s or something like that. Uh, being in a hurricane's not all that bad, especially if it doesn't hit you dead on. I if, it say. if it's not if a cat five, it, it hits, hits you, you in the on, face. You're fucked. Yeah. You're fucked. All yeah. right, just yeah. leave. But I, I've always sat here and told everybody: tropical storm, uh, tropical depression, tropical storm. One, two, three. You're having a fucking party. It doesn't matter. You're sitting on the fucking porch, and be like, "Yo, this is some nice ass weather. Look at that tree go sideways. Holy shit." <laughs> Category four, mm. you're sitting there watching the news, but you're not like eyeballing it. You're just hearing it into the kitchen. You're like, all right, we got to make a plan just in case, but we're not going to leave yet. As soon as you hear cat five and it's going to be on your ass, you're like, yeah, we're grabbing everything. We're getting, getting the, the fuck, fuck out. out. Here. Getting the fuck out. Last, last quick note, and then we're going to move on to AACL stuff since it's already almost 20 after. Uh, Private Clams. That is the that is the fucking barometer, right? Has Waffle House closed down or not? Uh, that is always the they, barometer for a hurricane. They, they did put out some uh, locations that are in Tampa and everywhere else down in that south uh, part of Florida. Waffle House are closed. Wow. All right, folks. Well, like I said, if you're in the path or if you live in Florida, hopefully you've gotten out, uh, you've evacuated, and then uh, if you haven't, please hunker down, be safe. I don't even know if we have any people there, but I'm sure everybody knows somebody that's uh, real, in that real, area. Real quick question, Dave. What? Because uh, Thursday, when that hurricane is supposed to be on top of Florida – yeah. 
our first game is Penn State at Florida. <laughs> Oh, no. We might have the worst weathered game in the history of the AAC. I don't wow. know what I don't know what the game will allow us to do, but whatever it is, that's going to be it. And there's yeah. hurricane winds, and you just yeah. see the quarterback just fly up in the air. That's it. All right, folks. He, he, the ball he, goes backwards. He, yeah, punts <laughs> backwards. <laughs> Minus 30 yards that. on your putt. That's awesome. Uh, all right, folks, here we go. Week 13 has been completed, so here are your week 13 records. Uh, as we all know, UNLV took care of Penn State quite handedly uh, to move to 11 and two, drop Penn State to 10 and three. We've got a nice little clusterfuck there at eight and five, but look at we don't have double clusterfucks anymore, you guys. We have one at eight and five, and then everything else kind of smooths out after that. Um, you've got Alabama, Florida, Kansas, Nebraska, and Tennessee, and then after that, it's two teams only over 500. Uh, Syracuse of Virginia Tech still on the cusp of being eliminated. Uh, Auburn, Missouri, Ohio State, Notre Dame, Miami already eliminated from the playoffs. We're going to talk more about the playoffs in just a bit. But let's talk about the KMPR. So, Clams, let me see here. You can get a drum roll whenever you get a chance. Ooh, I was a little premature on that one. Uh, KMPR, it, it was very interesting to me, Keith, as I, as I, as I was inputting this. UNLV stays up top. Uh, you know, of course, Nebraska jumps up two, right? Kansas State drops one. Then you've got a whole bunch of teams like um, uh, Kansas, Tennessee, and Florida that Did jump you say up. Kansas I know. State? I, I meant fucking Penn State. You know, hey, like I tell my children, do what I mean, not what I say. Penn State dropped one, but Kansas, Tennessee, and Florida all bumping up one. Um, Alabama, the huge loser this week, and. LSU only dropping one more, which was kind of interesting. So, Keith, my first question to you, and then I'll let you explain whatever, is, you know, LSU's lost to like what five, six in a row, whatever it is, and they're still mm-hmm. at they're still at number eight. Alabama yeah. loses three in a row, and they're dropping three at a time. What's the difference there? Well, it, it, the reason why Alabama dropped so much is because the KMPR deemed it a home upset loss, which is. That is like almost worst case scenario. I think the only they would have dropped further if Iowa had won by 17 plus or something like that. Okay. Um, but they didn't. But yeah, Bama, Bama, de- Bama losing to Iowa at home. That was like I said, deemed as a home upset loss. And then you have uh, Tennessee winning, Kansas winning, Nebraska winning, uh, and those were the three teams directly below Alabama. And so Bama just kind of got screwed by circumstances, you could say. Okay, so let me go around the horn like I always do. Ray, I'll go to you first. Alabama's not necessarily a shocker to me. I just feel like they're falling faster than an LSU team who has lost more. Are you surprised to see LSU still in the KMPR? And what's your overall take on this week's KMPR? Uh. I mean, the KMPR also goes by, like, I guess the stats of the game as well, if I'm not wrong. Special in a, K? In a sense, yes, it more or less goes by, um, it more or less goes off of the score and the magnitude at which a team won or lost. Okay. So just judging based off of that, if we go back to, what, this past week, LSU... Oh shit! They, yeah, L- LSU lost by fourteen yeah, at Kansas. At Kansas, yeah. And then Auburn Which... lost by only uh, four. So uh, I don't understand this record actually. <laughs> they only lost by four. What the fuck? <laughs> I feel like Keith Auburn, just has a Keith Auburn just has a by, hatred. Auburn lost by six. I, I said think. Alabama, not Auburn. They said Alabama. Yeah. Alabama lost by four. To but Iowa, Alabama, so but Alabama Keith did lose their. Alabama. But Alabama, Alabama did lose their third in a row, right? They did lose their third in a row, which makes sense. And I mean, dropping three now matches their three that they just dropped. Um, well, I think the problem is is that the KMPR saw its number three team lose to its number twelve team at home, and was like, "Hold on, something's going on here." As opposed to, uh, you said Kansas beating LSU. Kansas was two spots ahead of LSU already, and that game was at home. And so, and LSU was, is on the biggest downtrend in the history of the AACL at this point. It seems like. 
Well, yes, but let's not forget that Auburn was in a similar situation for most of the season where the KMPR wanted to keep it in there. Yeah. Correct me if I'm uh, wrong. Was 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 LSU 7 and 0 when they were number 1? Have they lost 6 in a row? 7 and uh, 2. 7 and Yeah, seven they were two. 7 and 2. Seven oh, 7 and they two. lost Okay. They lost to Penn State at home and It was like week 3 they lost at home. They lost to Alabama on the road. So LSU has lost 4 in a row and Alabama has lost 3 in a row. Is that where we're at with this? Yeah. Okay. I believe right. that's the case. Yeah. Yogi, let me get That's Yogi right. to chime in here. Yogi, as you see the KMPR uh, for this week, and for those of you who may not be here very often, like I see Albert begin. What's up, Albert begin? Um, KMPR is just one of all the entities that vote to give you your official rankings, uh, but he uses a different system uh, than the rest of us use. The rest are ADs and league uh, personnel voting, where the KMPR actually has to follow some guidelines. So. Uh, Yogi, your uh, impression here on the week 13 going into week 14 KMPR. Um, Kendrick's mom really loves Nebraska. <laughs> they, 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 they bumped all the way up to second with Penn State losing to number one. I, I think that's a little harsh. I'm sure he's got some scenarios that cause this, but well, I think they, Kendrick's well, mom loves Nebraska. I, I don't disagree with that, but so Keith, let me ask you this. Number two last week was Penn State. They lost. They dropped to three. Number three was Alabama, if I'm not mistaken, right? They dropped three spots. Who was number four last week? That was Nebraska. So it's almost kind of natural that Nebraska would bump up if the two teams ahead of them lost. Am I correct in that? Yes, that's correct. And the I, I will say uh, Nebraska scored few touchdowns there at the mm-hmm. end that ultimately didn't really matter. If they had If they had not scored one of those, then Penn State would be two, Nebraska would be three. Gotcha. But like, like, I, like, like I mentioned to Ray earlier, because margin of victory is something that's taken into account here uh, with the KMPR, that was the deciding factor between two and three. Gotcha. All right. Um, Virginia Tech stays put at number nine. Iowa uh, joins uh, the KMPR at back, <laughs> joins it again after joining and then leaving abruptly uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, and Auburn, who joined last week, drops back out. So it's very interesting how that like nine and ten spot is kind of a revolving door. Um, last last uh, thoughts from anyone on KMPR before we go to the official rankings. Fuck you, Syracuse. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Fuck you, Syracuse. I, I get. I guess I'll add to your uh, to your point you just made there, Dave, about nine and ten being a revolving door. Really. Like and anywhere from eight to thirteen is just a complete revolving door, and that was kind of what I expected. Um, if there are going to be teams that don't necessarily string together a lot of wins, because that's most of the reason why Nebraska has climbed so high, is because Nebraska is seven and one in the last eight games. Um, so, I mean, e- even a team like Kansas, they've been kind of flip flopping a little bit, and that's why they've kind of stayed at that four to six range right. that they established themselves at at the, at the beginning of the season. Gotcha. Same, same with Tennessee. They've been doing, they're, they're like yeah. marrying each other. Yeah. They'll yeah. Win that's, one, lose that's another one, good example. win two, <laughs> lose one. Yep. That's right. Enough. Yeah. That's a, well. And it's ironic that both those teams and in, in addition to Alabama and a couple others are in that eight and five clusterfuck that we talked oh, about yeah. earlier. So, mm-hmm. all right, clams, let's, uh, let's check out these week three official rankings. Week 13. What the fuck am I saying? All right, folks. I'm sure it's no surprise that number one beat up on number two. So number one stays there. Number two lost a little bit of ground, uh, but got enough votes to stay at number two. There were a couple uh, close ones. Let me grab my notebook here. I will tell you that uh, UNLV definitely pulled away from Penn State in the uh, one to two battle for sure. Nebraska moves up. Look at three, four, five, six. They all move up one, right? Nebraska up one. Tennessee up one. Kansas one up. Florida one. Alabama drops four. And so they drop three in the KMPR. They drop four in the standings. Iowa jumps up two. Virginia Tech rejoins us again. Um, and wait. Oh, that. Oh, you know what? I fucked that up. Virginia Tech, you were nine last week, weren't you? I think Virginia Tech was nine. Yeah. Never mind. I, yes, I fucked Iowa, that up. Iowa yeah, was behind. Instead of the two asterisks, it was supposed to be a dash. I fucked that up. 
Um, but then LSU drops two and is now finally, after four straight losses, almost out of the top ten. Syracuse, the only other school to drop out. I'm sorry, to to receive votes. And then obviously dropped out none, which confirms that I fucked up the Virginia Tech thing. So as you're looking at the graphic, just pretend there's a dash here at Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech stays at number nine. Uh, the big beneficiary here, beneficiary here, I think, in all of this, in both polls, if you ask me, has been Nebraska for sure. Uh, when it comes to vote totals, I will tell you that Tennessee – no, I'm sorry. Hold on. One, two, three. Nebraska was in a comfortable number three. Number four and five, Tennessee and Kansas, one single vote separated those yeah. two teams. And – one or, or two votes separated eight, nine, and ten. Iowa, Virginia Tech, and LSU all within two votes of each other. Um, wow! You Ray, your impressions here of our rankings going into Week 14? Uh, I'm not even going to go into my rant about number two up there. Uh, every yeah. everything else just looks pretty normal how I, how I usually had it, except maybe a couple spots up. Alabama dropping down four, that makes sense. As you said, they've been on that losing streak for a while now. Uh, Iowa jumping up two after their uh, win against LSU, that was huge. LSU barely on that cusp. As you see down there, others receiving votes. Syracuse uh, was probably me. I gave Syracuse the I number think 10 two, spot. only two people voted for Syracuse, if I remember correctly. Well, there you go, Syracuse. I tried to get you in the top ten, but everybody else just said fuck you. Yeah, with with like two middle fingers even. Yeah. Yogi, um, you you stay put at number nine, even though you had an impressive win over Missouri. Uh, LSU dropping, Alabama dropping. Remember, just a couple weeks ago, Alabama and LSU both in the top four consistently. Uh, now both battling even stay in the top ten. Yeah, I think um, Syracuse today is coming. If LSU loses another game, they're going to probably fall out. Alabama's got to right their ship quickly or they're going to be dropping down low. It seems like um, both polls recognize and give Nebraska a lot of credit for that big winning streak they're on 7-1, and one, like Kendrick said. So I think yeah. I think the polls are, are very good. They're very close. I like them. Yeah, Michaela, I just checked my notes. You were correct. So there were three voters uh, who voted for – or who had Syracuse in their vote. It was Michaela, Ray – and uh, Chase Daniels were the three that put them in there. Uh, Keith, as you look over these uh, Week 13 official rankings and compare them to your KMPR Top 10, what stands out? Yeah, I mean, I, I do not have a problem with Penn State at two in the official rankings. Um, if, I, if I was to fill out a ballot with my own opinions, that's probably what I would do. Um, aside from that, I mean, yeah, I, I think this is the third straight week that it's the same 10 teams in both rankings. So are we, uh, no, it was three of the last four weeks we had okay. last so three, week, week okay. before we had there one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's right. Yep. Oh, it was, pre Oh, it would have been Auburn then. Um, yeah, that is correct. Yeah. Which, yeah, which we, we all know what, <laughs> what KMPR thinks of Auburn. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that we've kind of reached a point where the top 10 teams in the league are, relatively clear now at this point i think i'd said last week that virginia tech was the best of those five and seven teams that group of five and seven teams yeah um and what did they do they won and here they are in the rankings i think the only i think the only other five and seven that won last week was syracuse if it, i remember yep, correctly that's yep. correct. correct yeah correct and sure enough they're 11th in voting so i i really don't have a problem with just about anything with the official rankings yeah. um Yo, yeah and, and i'm not i'm not surprised about some of the differences between the two yogi you're you're one of two teams that are right on that cusp right you got you got let's see one two three four five you got seven teams that really have a great shot iowa and lsu kind of on the bubble with you and syracuse fighting for your playoff lives as you see this that's 11 teams if you had to kick one of those teams that you see out of the out of the top 10, do you like it the way it is, or do you think Syracuse should be in there replacing someone? I think Syracuse is right there. Like you know, like you said earlier, it's two votes separating the three teams. I think they're right there. I think LSU, the voters are going to give them one more chance, and if they don't produce this week, they're, they're out. Syracuse is Oh, in. I can almost guarantee you if LSU loses, they're out for sure. Yeah. 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 
Um, yeah, they, they they had established they had done enough earlier in the season to give them yeah. give themselves multiple chances. Which I mean, that's how it should be. Rankings are met are uh, merit based. Let me let me throw this question out real quick, Ray. You can you can answer it first. Is it better to be a team like LSU that wins a lot at the beginning, holds your rankings, and then maybe loses near the end, or does it show voting wise at least? I don't know about the KPR, but at least voting wise. And we'll, we'll take the playoffs part out of it, but just voting wise for rankings, is it better to suck at the beginning and then get your fucking wins down the stretch and move up? I mean, if we're going based off the second option, I mean, we've got we might as well look at Nebraska up there back at number three. As you said, they're seven and one in li- in their last eight games. They were out of the top ten. Nobody even thought they were going to even crack the top ten for most of the season until they went on that winning streak. And now look at them; they're at number three. Uh. If we're going by actual college rankings, I would say uh, you losing in the end is kind of going to hurt. As a Ohio State Buckeye fan, I have felt that losing at the end of the season bullshit. Uh, but if we're going by AACL, apparently, uh, I guess it doesn't really matter if you lose at the end because look at Penn State. They lost by they lost huge against UNLV on uh, last Wednesday, but they're still at number two. Yeah, on the flip side of that, though, Yogi, Alabama and LSU are obviously the standouts who were in the top four for most of the season, and now the last few weeks they're going on losing streaks, and they are plummeting, bro. Yeah, I mean, it, if you go back to that year that um, Virginia Tech beat Ohio State in the opener, by the end of the season, everybody forgot about that game. But your teams like Florida State last year that lose a quarterback to an injury, they don't forget about those things. So there's a lot of optics that go into this, you know, mm-hmm. real and ours. And I, I think that's yeah. that's all involved in it. So streaks are very important, good and bad. All right, Keith, last word. You got 30 seconds on that. Uh, yeah, N- Yogi just hit the nail on the head, um, especially the, the whole streaks are very important thing. Yes, absolutely. Um, there, I mean – the people that fill out these rankings ballots, they're people that have eyeballs and subjective opinions. Yeah. Um, they can, they can tell when a team is playing well right now, or they, I mean, people make arguments such as like this, this is a top eight or so team right now, or they look like it right now. Um, although I will say once you get up at the top, there's not a whole lot of margin of error to keep your spot. Uh, before dropping back down, which I, I think that's I think that's more of a thing in this league, just because of how many teams we have with only sixteen, as opposed to in real life. Yeah, hundred and whatever, hundred yeah. and thirty something. Yeah. All right. Well, that being said, folks, there's your KMPR top ten, your week thirteen records, and your new official uh, rankings after thirteen games going into week fourteen. We're not going to spend a lot of time on the playoffs since we just dissected kind of the rankings right now, but I do want to pop this up again i redid this unlv and penn state are obviously still locked so the only double digit team wins uh the closest teams are still two games behind with two games to play so i feel confident saying unlv and penn state will both be in even if penn state were to finish 10 and 5 i think they're in then you've got this like i keep calling it this clusterfuck we had two clusterfucks though the last couple weeks and it's at least it's down to one now you've got alabama florida kansas nebraska and tennessee all fighting and that's one, two, three, four, five teams. If you have the top two, that's seven. And I'm going to ask this question in a minute, so keep it in the back of your heads, you guys. What if we go to a 16 playoff? Who's just going to be out? But before we get to that, I went LSU, the only two teams that are just over 500, Syracuse and Virginia Tech just under 500, with Auburn, Mizzou, Ohio State, Notre Dame, Miami already been uh, eliminated. And Cuse and Virginia Tech both uh, this week. Could potentially join that group at the bottom. But let's concentrate on those top seven teams for just a moment, Ray. And I'm going to go around. And we don't have to get crazy deep on this since we're sh- running short on time now. But UNLV, Penn State, Alabama, Florida, Kansas, Nebraska, and Tennessee. If one of those teams, let's say those are the final seven going into it. And you got to deal with tiebreakers and all that shit. And it comes down to just Ray's opinion. Who's out of the playoffs? Uh, definitely. You, get, you just straight go to Alabama. Alabama, ever since they claimed that number one spot, they just started going downhill. That offense is not rolling like how it should. That defense is definitely not rolling how it should. There's there's just been no oomph in Alabama to keep them staying above float. So 
they're on the Titanic. They're fucking sinking. Yogi, do you agree with that, or do you have another uh, team in mind here in this who top does, Al- you, does, does anybody know who Alabama plays the next two weeks? I could tell uh, you. They, they, and, play and, Q, and they play Q's this week. Ooh. Oh, I can tell you. Yeah, they play them, uh, is it Wednesday? Alabama has Alabama. Syracuse, and then Alabama has Auburn. All right, how about Kansas? Oh, shit, hold on. I just got off uh, the Kansas. Kansas plays UNLV this week, I know. UNLV Ooh. this week, and Kansas has Iowa for the last week. Ooh. Kansas has to play UNLV. That sucks. If you want Florida, then Iowa. Florida plays Penn State, and then they have Syracuse. Yeah. Well, Syracuse really kind of controls their own destiny, don't they? Yeah, well, we've got that LSU. We've got LSU on a four-game losing streak. That's not the greatest spot to be in. <laughs> Follow no. now. I'm, I'm hoping Penn State loses so UNLV can sit their starters for our last game. <laughs> yeah. Well, here, here's, yeah, the thing, oh, Yogi. Here, here's the thing, Yogi. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at Week 15 and looking at who you got. UNLV. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I'm hoping they sit their starters because they got it wrapped up. Um. Oh my God. All right, Keith. Here's here's the scenario. There's seven teams. Let's assume UNLV and Penn State are in. Of these five that are left, let's say they're all tied. We worked out the tiebreakers, and I go to Keith. I say, bro, it's your opinion. Who are we kicking out of the playoffs? Um, yeah. I'm, it, hmm. That's a tough one. It'd be a real um, curveball if he said Nebraska. Nah. Yeah, where's <laughs> I, I, I hit that Discord noise right now. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Yeah. I, You're fired. I mean, I mean, really, I think all of those teams have have shown their worst and their best already this season. Um, I don't think any of those teams will show either their best or their worst the rest of this season. Um, but I mean, if you're just if you're just going off of most recent performances and how they look now, I mean, yeah, it's Alabama, especially with the playbook change they made this last week that completely backfired on them um that'll be interesting to see whether or not they stick with that i'm guessing they won't but if they do then they could really be in trouble yeah i don't i don't necessarily disagree with you and ray as we've seen the last few weeks florida kansas nebraska and tennessee have all had decent wins to kind of propel themselves to that um i i would have to agree i guess i'd have to agree with you guys for now but we got two more weeks to find out, and if they're all tied at either what nine and six or ten and five, uh, then we have a whole another conversation to have. Oh, uh, Michaela, that's a great point in the chat. Florida would get the cut because of the situation with UNLV. Oh, the head to head, yeah, the head to head. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Thanks, thank you, Michaela, for ruining my fucking. Uh, my hypothetical question. You know, you know what we should do after week 15? We should just have like a stream, just like a playoff stream. And then we just right. reveal the top six like they actually do in. Oh, we're going to uh, we're going to do something. Yeah. We're going to do something like that. We're yeah. also going to fucking cut Michaela for ruining my shit. So eight, <laughs> eight, teams, not six. Eight, eight teams, not six. Yeah. Uh, yeah, or wait, I mean, we may, well, we may have eight. We don't, we don't know what it's going to be. It all depends. It's yeah, going to depend on records. So, so we'll have to see. Uh, you can't, you can't make the playoffs with a sub 500 record. And because we have exactly. an odd number of games, nobody can have a 500 record, so you have to be above 500 to even be in the conversation. Speaking of this conversation, let's talk about the fucking Offensive Player of the Week for Week 13, and that person is... It's Phil Moore hey. Slim. 20 carries, afraid. 231 yards. Here's, but the vote, here's the voting. Here's how the voting went down. Uh, only eight people voted this this week this is the second lowest voter turnout of the season uh fillmore got six of the eight votes rodney dangerfield got one jared lorenzen got one um how is it not unanimous come on now um i mean rodney dangerfield did throw it like he did have seven total picks, touchdowns in this six game. picks yeah yeah <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, there's that. <laughs> everybody's just gonna look at the seven total touchdowns. <laughs> um, any any disagreements with this? Anyone? 
No. Nope. I don't think so. Mm -mm, I really nope. can't. Listen, 20 attempts, 231 yards, and uh, he only had one touchdown because his other two got stolen by a backup and his yeah. fucking quarterback. And he got he averaged 11 Phil and a half Slim yards was, per carry. <laughs> yeah, Fillmore yeah. Slim was running up and down that goddamn field. There was no yeah, stopping was. Fillmore Slim. Yeah, he was. Yeah, I think. In the biggest, in the biggest oh. game of the year, too. Yeah, uh, I, I think. Another note, uh, 231, that's number three all time in a, in a single so, game. So he owns two of the top five records now, correct? Yeah, he owns number three and number four. Unbelievable. All time. He is having, claimed, is it just me or is claimed, he having a Rodney Dangerfield award type season? Uh, claims just reminded me about all those massive stiff arms he gave to the fucking Nittany Lions during oh, that, that was, game too. Yeah, the punching in the face and shit, I do remember that. Stiff arm slim, I like it. All right, uh, speaking of taking stiff arms. Let's see who the defensive player of the week is. It is DJ Price, cornerback for Tennessee, four tackles, three interceptions. Oop, I forgot that part. Um, but one of that third interception of his was a pick six walk off yep. in overtime, which I think sealed the deal for him. Uh, this one was not as close to the offense. He got seven of the eight votes. The other one going to Joe wow. Bow. Joe Bow had a great game too. He had five sacks. I think there was one more player that I think had a really good game. I think there were three that really Four stood acre. out to me. Was it? Oh, Rob. That's right. It was Rob. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think DJ Price also well deserving. Anybody uh, have another take other than that? It may have been the play of the year that walk off pick six. It could yeah, be. Yeah. It could be one of. There. It could hey, be I'll there. let you guys in on a little spoiler. I was the one that <laughs> voted for Joe Bo. <laughs> I know. I love when people vote for their own team members. Too. So, uh, no, I, listen, I told Dave. I told Dave in in DMs. He was like, "Really, you're not voting for DJ Price?" I was like, "Listen, three interceptions is nice. Having a pick six is also nice. But the only the only deciding factor that I put Joe Bo and Rob Foraker. Rob Foraker would have been my second vote." Uh, the only reason why I put them above DJ Price is because I mean five sacks in a fucking game is ridiculous. First, and it, foremost. it is, it is, and I think in another week he probably would have won. He, he probably yep. would in another week, I and agree. then you and then you look at Rob Foraker. Rob Foraker had double digit tackles. He had great tackles for losses, and he filled up every single other fucking stat category that he could. I think the problem with Rob's stats that we're seeing from week to week is that there's so many good defensive players. You have to do that one thing to stand out. Yep. And I think DJ Price did it this week where the other two didn't. That's the only thing. Like if think about if if Bo's fifth sack had come on a game winning sack or something like that, we may be having another conversation. But how many times do we get to see an overtime walk off interception in this league, especially when it's the third of that player's game? We don't see that very often here. So yep. I agree with this. Uh, I agree with the voting. Uh and I don't have anything against Joe Bo or Rob getting votes. I just think DJ Price uh, is the right choice and congrats to Fillmore Slim. I think that's his second win this season for um, Offensive Player of the Week. And DJ Price, I believe that's his first one. So congrats to both of those. And we will move into the last segment. And we are way behind time. So I'm going to ask each of you uh, to roll through these. But you can pick one game that you can kind of lose your shit on a little bit. And other than that, I just want you to pick the winners with like 10 seconds of fucking talk. Uh, Ray, we'll start with you. Right out the gate, number one versus number five. UNLV at Kansas. We know that Kansas is the giant killer. Do they kill another giant tonight? No. Uh, this giant's not going to get killed by Kansas. My God. Uh, Jayhawks, your Jays are about to get creased thanks to the uh, running Rebels running all over your fucking shoes. Uh, Yogi, you know, Auburn was, I feel like, a, a bigger powerhouse than UNLV is and Kansas beat them, why can't Kansas beat UNLV? There's no reason they can't. They are a giant killer, and they have a lot more to play for in this game than UNLV. And backs against the wall, they don't want to drop out of that 8-5 and five club. So I, I got them winning this one. Um, Keith, I, I don't remember. Kansas, we know they've beaten like three top teams right here. I know it was um, Auburn. I feel like it was LSU at one point. I don't remember what the other one was, but – uh, I mean, they beat LSU last week. Yeah, no, but yeah, but last year they beat like the number two uh -oh, team yes. or something. Yeah, last, they, or last yeah. season, I meant. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah is yeah. this the same Kansas team, and can they pull it off again, or is UNLV just that just that good this season? Yeah, I, I think Kansas offense has been a sleeping giant. Uh, it's, stylistically, it's a bit different than what how they started the year, but it's still very dangerous. 
Um, I, I think if Hauser gets it going, then they can get the job done. So I'm, I'm picking Kansas. All right, one for UNLV, one for Kansas. Uh, AACL one Nation. For Kansas. Or two for Kansas. What did I say? What I said. You said one for Kansas. Yeah, well, it's what the fuck I said. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, Yogi. All right, hey, fuck, fuck, your, fuck your votes. Um, One for UNLV and cow. two for Kansas. I'm going to give a third one to Kansas as I took them in the pickums. AACL Nation, though, overwhelmingly 37 to 10 in favor of UNLV as we go into game number two, Iowa at Ohio State. Iowa trying to get into that clusterfuck right there, a game back. Ohio State, nothing really left to play for except to play spoiler. Uh, Ray, do they get to play spoiler t- tonight against Iowa? There's been nothing special about these Buckeye, this Buckeye team since they started on this downhill streak. I don't see Nate Hall doing anything. I don't see Ryan Davis doing anything. That offense is, just doesn't have that spark like they used to. I got the Iowa Hawkeyes. Yogi? I think Iowa has a chance to win out with themselves at 9-6. and six. I got Iowa winning. All right, Keith, you got the last word. Yeah, Nate Hall since week nine, uh, three touchdowns to 11 interceptions. Oh, that's Yeah, that's bad. That's got to change at some point. I, I know love, they made I a love play. how you had to tell us that's bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> that one jumped out at you. Oh, shit. But wait, wait, is that good? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, no, that – that shocked me when I was when I was mm. looking at stats. Uh, I know they they also ran the Colorado playbook and struggled with it like Alabama did. I know Ryan Davis said he's a fan of that playbook, but right. if they do, if they don't make changes, I think they're in trouble. If they do, I think Ohio State's I, I think Ohio State's going to win. I think they're more explosive than All Iowa. Right. This is a very very close game in the Pickums, twenty five to twenty three in favor of Iowa. Um, I also took Iowa in the Pickums. Benji Matson in the chat saying Kansas is preparing to exploit a little known AAC AACL rule tonight. If they beat the crap out of Ray in the alley after the show, then UNLV has to forfeit the game tonight. Wait, what? He's like, wait, wait, I'm what? Gonna vote that next I, I, I'm like, yeah. Hey, uh, Michaela also real quick saying that she thinks the Nebraska Tennessee game two eight five teams uh, is the game of the week, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. But let's talk about Alabama at Syracuse first. Uh, Ray, Alabama's got to do something. Syracuse though. Playing for their playoff lives. If they lose, they're out. If they win, they still have a chance to be in. Who you got? Every single week you've heard me come on on here and say Syracuse football sucks with that special little sound effect. Do not play that sound effect, Clams, because surprisingly, I'm tired of Alabama. The L in Alabama is what they will take <laughs> repeatedly till the end of the season. I'm taking the fucking oranges. I love how you've gone from Syracuse football sucks to if you do the U in Miami, it's two L's. To the L in Alabama. <laughs> yeah, if you take if you take the U for Miami, you split it apart. You could take one of those L's and, and put, put it in Alabama. Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! All right. Uh, so you've got you've got Syracuse. Uh, hoping they don't suck this week. Uh, Yogi, what about you? Alabama at Syracuse. They just uh, sent out an APV on Ray Bashan. He's not allowed <laughs> in the state of Alabama anymore. Ever. But- Good. Good. Yeah, Syracuse, Syracuse is playing just well enough to win games, and Alabama's not, so I'm going with Syracuse. All right. Are you going to make it the trifecta, Keith, or are you going against the grain here? Yeah. Uh, key for Bama to win this game, well, there's two. First of all, get rid of this Colorado playbook after one of the all-time bad passing performances. Yeah. Uh, second, Q's is 1-5 in five when they have under 200 yards rushing. That's the key for Bama. <laughs> Uh, they're definitely capable of doing it, but Hughes is just a roller coaster of a team. You never really know what you're going to get. Um, I think that I think they're going to stay in the upswing after getting the win last week. I'm going orange. Uh, AACL Nation says, "Fuck all three of you. We're taking Alabama 37 to 11." But I also took Syracuse at home with their playoff lives on the line and the Alabama losing streak going. Uh, your game of the week slot. Uh, Ray has chosen Virginia Tech at LSU, which I think on paper is a phenomenal game. Virginia Tech with their backs up against the wall. If they lose, they're out, just like Syracuse in the aforementioned game. But LSU has not been LSU since a brute bandit and whatever that wide receiver's name was left the building. Actually, they were still okay when the wide receiver left. When brute bandit left, LSU has not won a game since. I don't know how they recover from that. And, Ray, is this really going to be – the game of the week as you've slotted it this week. I feel like Yogi wants to get some words in. Was that Yogi or was that? Oh, no, that, that was me. 
Oh. All right. Well, Keith, you have to wait your turn. Ray. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Fine. Uh, you're I definitely see this as as like a game of the week. Not only is Virginia getting up there with two wins, two straight wins right now. I don't know anything after or before uh, Notre Dame. Uh, Virginia is <laughs> saving their season, and it's taken one game at a time. And now they're going against a week, uh, like a downhill LSU team that's pretty much got their backs against the wall, like everybody says. Uh, this game up, this game could be magical. It could, we could see the downhill downhill fall of Virginia Tech just getting eliminated, or we could just see LSU just slowly falling into that abyss like they've always been doing. Uh, I surprisingly, the past two weeks I've chosen against Virginia Tech because I want them, to, I've wanted to see them get eliminated. So I'd be like, hey, welcome to the couch, Yogi. Uh, I'm gonna try to reverse the fortune a little bit. I got Virginia Tech over LSU, and let's see, let's see if LSU can work its little magic charm against Virginia Tech. All right, Yogi, I'm assuming you're choosing your team. Tell us why. Hey, don't pick my team. We we're using you as bulletin board material. Every week. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead and pick LSU. Uh, Virginia I remember, Tech by twenty. I remember going up against an Ofer Miami team, going, "Well, we should get this win. Let's let's move on to the next week." Mm. That didn't work too well for me. Yeah. So uh, we're, we're, we're focusing on this game, like you said. So I'm going with us because our lives are on the line and we're yep. trying to – if we get into the playoffs, we'll be battle-tested these last six games against tougher teams. So we'll see what happens. I'm going Tech. Keith, is there any way that LSU can right the ship starting tomorrow night? Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to start off with LSU won their first game without Brute Bandit. They won by 43 points. Who and is, then since what then game was that? NA, it was against Miami. They won fifty two oh, to nine. Come on, it's Miami. No, yeah, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> right. Come on. Yeah, well well, the reason why they won that game has been the reason why they've it's lost Miami. all their games since then, which is that Miami gave up like almost five hundred yards passing and Larry Ballin since then has not had a game with more touchdowns and interceptions. That has to change if they're gonna keep winning, which the problem is they keep sticking with this spread option Oregon playbook. Um, I'm assuming that they're going to stick with it, um, but I don't know. Give me something. Something, Give me some, something. something, something tells me that LSU is going to step up and win a game finally. I think they're going to win at least one of these last two games, and I think if, if it's going to be anything, it's going to be tonight against Virginia Tech. All right. Or, New bulletin board, board material. All right. New there you go. Material. There you go. <laughs> Uh, nice 30 seconds special K. Yeah, I was going to say, like, you guys are, I told everybody, you guys are dragging this shit out. We're going to be late now. Virginia oh, Tech. You know me. I like to talk. Virginia, bro. I'm just going to start muting you, bro. Uh, Virginia <laughs> Tech, uh, 29 to 21, pick chosen by AACL Nation. I also chose Virginia Tech. I just feel like a team that has something to play for up against the wall against a team that is struggling, uh, I think it goes Virginia Tech's way. Uh, Wednesday night, 10 p.m., the nightcap game on Wednesday night, tomorrow night. Uh, Notre Dame, who, much like Ohio State that we talked about earlier, playing spoiler now. Or actually, not even playing spoiler. It's two teams that are out of the playoffs. Who gives a fuck about this game, Ray? Was that the transition to me to pick? Yeah, because I, I, I was like, I was like, I got nothing. I got nothing about this game. Two teams that, I got nothing. Like, they, like they can't oh, even okay, spoil each you. other. I'll give you two damn reasons, all right? First and foremost, crazy hit it on the nail. It's Ray versus Clams. Uh, this week. Oh, there's something. Uh, thank you, God. Thank you for seeing yeah. something. I will give you another fucking reason, though. Wait. We got Pink Lisa versus Blue Lisa in this game. Who's going to throw the most interceptions? <laughs> I'm going with myself because I chose the Auburn Tigers that beat the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Fuck, I was wondering why this wasn't on the fucking Sunday night at 2 a.m. slot, but um, Notre Dame and Auburn, Yogi, um, you heard what Ray said. What do you, like, Have do you even think about this game? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, Pink Lisa's going to dole out some lessons, and Auburn's going to win. All right, and then uh, Keith, what do you what do you, what do you think about this game, bro? Yeah, at the top of my notes for this game, I literally wrote in all caps: "The Battle of the New Pink Lisas." Oh shit! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, surprisingly, Notre Dame has the number two pass defense, but they still give up a million points a game, seemingly. What the fuck? And that's, yeah, I know. Right. I, I couldn't believe it either. Well. Um, <clears throat> All right, but yeah, I, I just I just think that Auburn's gonna get the job done. Uh, AACL Nation, including myself, thinks Auburn is going to crush Notre Dame as they have chosen forty-two to five in Ooh. in favor of the Auburn Tigers. All right, going to the last night, we're gonna do these quick, you guys. 
Penn State at Florida, which I think could potentially be game of the week material. Uh, Penn, Florida playing well. Penn State uh, needing that rebound win to kind of try and keep pace with UNLV. I know you're not a big Penn State fan lately, but who do you think wins this game, Ray? You're in the upset swamp. There's no way you're going to win. Florida is going to take down the Nittany Lions. Florida's going to win in the swamp. Yogi, agree or disagree? I think Florida has more to play for, and I think they're going to be prepared for this game because they want to separate themselves away from that 8-5 and five pack. I give them a win. Interesting, Keith. I think both teams have something to play for here. Who would you pick? Yeah, 100% they both have something to play for. Uh, the new weather update throws a wrench into things. <laughs> well, we'll, see. Um, we'll, we'll see. I I may not fuck with it if it's really bad. We'll see. Right, yeah. Um, I, I, I really just think that Penn State has been one of the most – efficient teams offensively this year and their defense has of course been efficient um i i think it's going to make a big difference in this game i think penn state's going to win um i'm not sure how much but i think they're going to get the job done um hey yeah. question real quick yeah, go ahead. since if you can't control the weather for that game can you move it to a dome um, I, someone, asked, someone asked that question in the chat. Maybe oh, okay. I'm gonna okay. look. I mean, I may not just. I'm gonna. I'm gonna look and see what weather choices there are for bad weather. Usually, okay. I don't like to put the foggy stuff because you can't see, and anything nah. anything past light rain ends up being kind of ridiculous. So I might just end up doing light rain. We'll see. Um, here we go. Sounds good. It'll be like a cat one. AACL Nation, overwhelmingly like this is a fucking. This might be the biggest one or second biggest one. I think it's the second biggest one in the early game game. 38-6 to six in favor of Penn State. AACL Nation thinking Penn State is going to rebound Damn. and take care of business in the swamp. Um, wow. I, I'm actually one of them. I think Penn State, I think they're a good rebound team. I think they'll be okay. Uh, here's another game. I mean, Thursday night is loaded, man. Nebraska at Tennessee, Ray. Uh, this is another potential matchup of the week, like Michaela said in the chat. Uh, you got the red-hot Nebraska against the semi-hot you know, volunteers right now. And I, they're very close in the rankings as well. So who'd you pick? All right. We're going to try this again, guys. Good old Rocky top. Woo. Uh, fuck you. Nebraska wins. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Uh, all right. Then one for Nebraska. Yogi. Nebraska is on a roll, but man, I mean, this Gunny and Freddie versus Michaela and Kendrick. <laughs> and Dave, it's it's going to come down to plays, but I, 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 my heart wants me to go with Tennessee. That's the first time I've ever been an afterthought. There you uh, go, Keith. Keith. Keith? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, key for this game for Tennessee, they got to get Freddie the ball more. He's third lowest touches among running backs, which is ridiculous considering how efficient he is. Um, if they do that, then they got a really good chance to win this game. I know I picked – or I was hesitant to pick uh, Nebraska last week. I'm even more hesitant this week, but obviously still have faith in our guys because our defense yep. is uh, is on a roll. Uh, David Leathers in the chat saying, Ray is for sure the lead course of this show. I love it. Does that mean that uh, you can't understand the fucking words that are coming out of his mouth? <laughs> <laughs> no, next season, next season, I'm just going to I'm just gonna get like the ma mascot heads and you're just going to have yeah. to put oh, it all right. on. Well, yeah. hey, all right. so a little spoiler alert before we continue these real quick. I want everyone to know, do we have the bump, bump, bump? Where's that dun, dun, dun? Do we have that oh. soundboard somewhere? Let me see if I can find it. I got it. I got it. I got Impending it. doom. Oh, thank you. Oh. Thank, thank you, whoever. Impending dooms. That's all right. Um, little little uh, peek behind the curtain here. Next season's AACL Tonight will look a lot different. We'll have some different material. And we will all be on camera. So, Ray, you will be able to do whatever you want to do to choose those teams <laughs> next season for all the world to see. So there you go. Uh, I also took Nebraska because they're my team. But I will tell you this, a little uh, asterisk here. If I didn't play for Nebraska, this falls into that rule that I have of teams that are so close, I would take the home team. So if I didn't play for Nebraska, I would take Tennessee. 
but because I play for Nebraska, I am uh, <laughs> sure you can clams. You can still do that. Uh, Nebraska. I, I obviously I take Nebraska. Uh, a A A C L Nation thirty six to fourteen though taking the home team Tennessee over the red hot Nebraska Cornhuskers. I guess A A C L Nation thinks Tennessee is going to stop that streak. Uh, we have one minute to get through this last game. Miami at Missouri. And I'll just tell you right now, forty-two to nine in favor of Missouri in the uh, in AACL Nation in the Pickums. Do we right? even need to talk about this game? I think we. Now, this is why. This is why I'm not worried about taking the first time. I'm gonna take that whole minute just to explain that if you take the U and you split it apart. <laughs> Here hey, we go. If you nah. if you travel Hurricane from Miami, sucks. if you travel from Miami to Tuscaloosa. Hurricane football sucks, and it's not just because of Hurricane Milton. Their football just sucks. Period. Missouri's on top. Yogi. Missouri. Got to go Missouri. Yeah. Ray. Or I'm sorry, fucking Keith. Yeah. Two worst defenses right here. So it'll be interesting to see how many points are scored. But yeah, uh, Missouri's winning. Yeah. Just to reiterate, 42 to 9. I also took Missouri in this. I just, I want Miami to win. And I think, you know, they've had probably the most close games. Next week. I yeah, would, next, I, next week is their best chance. I far. would argue, and we'd have to look at the stats, Keith, but I would argue Miami might have the closest, the most close games of anybody, or the, definitely the most close losses of any team. Uh, I think Virginia uh, Tech. Virginia, Virginia Tech. Virginia, yeah, Tech, Virginia Tech might have something right. to say about that. Well, you three, can, three, all right, three. Virginia Tech, you can say that off of uh, off air because we're going to wrap this shit up. So, all right, we'll see you here. It's 8.05, so we, we need 30 minutes. So we will see you at 8.35 uh, for the kickoff of UNLV, the number one team in the nation at number five, Kansas, followed by eighth-ranked Iowa at Ohio State. And uh, that's a wrap. So Clams, Keith, Yogi, Ray, appreciate everybody. We'll see you in 35 minutes, 835 Eastern, right here on Twitch. Peace. Goddamn, don't pull that thing out now, Dave. What the fuck? Hashtag too late.